Okay, g'day all. Welcome to another two. Uh, today we're going to implement our box blur in C++. Uh, but we're going to do it in such a way that I hope, anyway, that uh, later on it's easy to port to SSE, since that's uh, our objective in the end. Uh, before we get started, I want to mention that I was actually made a bit of a mistake, and there's a far better algorithm to use than uh, the sliding window one that I was talking about last shoot. So uh, I've read up a bit more on the box blur, and it turns out there's a super, super fast algorithm for a box blur. So we're going to go through that, uh, obviously, because it's a better way to do things. <laughs> um, but first of all, I want to mention this little trick about sliding averages. So. Uh, let's just say we've got five numbers, like this, in an, in an array, and uh, we've calculated the average to those, so... Uh, those particular five... Okay, the average comes out as four, just there, so that's the average of those five numbers. Um, let's say what we want to do is remove the six uh, up here from that list, and maybe replace it with a one. And then we want to recalculate the average. Um, what you could do, the kind of naive method, the slow method of doing it, would be to literally remove the 6 from the array, add the 1 to the array, and then um, sum up the uh, values again, and divide by 5 to get your average, but there's a much faster way to do it. What you can do is just take that average that we calculated before, uh, with the 6 in the array, and that was a 4, and you can say that the, um, the 6 up here is adding to that average 6 divided by 5. That's how much that 6 is adding to the 4. So if we, if we, if we minus the 6 from the array, uh, what we would end up with is uh, this value, minus um, 6 over 5. Um, there you go, we'd end up with an average of 2.8. And then if we were to uh, add a 1, like I said, if we were to replace that 6 there with a 1, if we add the 1 to this average, what we'd really be doing is adding 1 over 5. So 2.8 uh, plus 1 over 5, I'll just say uh, equals this value plus 1 over 5, uh, gives us 3. And with a little subtraction here and an addition here to the uh, average that we calculated before, what we end up with is uh, 3, and that happens to be, if I just copy and paste this over here, um, the average that we would get if we replaced that 6 with a 1. Let's have a look. Uh, those. There you go, a 3. Um, so we're going to be using that trick uh, quite a lot in our um, box blur algorithm. Fair enough. Just a little averaging trick, a little moving averaging or sliding average trick. Um, all right, so before we get on to the actual algorithm, I want to go through uh, how it works, I mean, before we code. Uh, so I've drawn up a little, uh, I guess, diagram, a, a simple representation of an image. This will be the original image that we passed from uh, Imogen. And this is what we're trying to box blur, these pixels in here. So these are all pixels. Um, real pixels have red, green, blue, and alpha values, but for this example, I'm just going to be using um, single integer values. It makes no difference in the end to the calculation. You'll get the point. Uh, and the other thing that I want to say is these values around the outside, these zeros here, um, I've colored those a bit gray. I've kind of dulled them out. Uh, they're not actually in RAM. They're not actually in the image. Uh, they come about from um, a, a condition on the borders. And um, when we actually come to code this, uh, we can have a look at the exact point where these zeros sort of come into play, and you can change it. You don't have to make it zero. Uh, you can make the borders anything you want, so maybe your image wraps around, or it might be white uh, that you assume is on the edge of your image, but with zero here, what we're, what we're assuming is that uh, outside the actual pixels of our image uh, is just an infinite plane of um, black. Yeah, so we'll see how you can change that um, in the actual algorithm when we come to code. Um, but for now, the box blur, so how does it work? Well, if I just write down here the, uh, the result that we're after, um, I'm going to calculate our box blur down here in another box. Uh, what we want to do is for every pixel in the image, say this 9 just here, uh, we actually want to calculate some average of a box around that 9. So it might be these, uh, you know, the surrounding single pixel box, just like that. Uh, the average of those 9 pixels would be our final result for that top right-hand pixel. And when you move across to the next one, uh, that 6 just there would become, in our resulting image, the average of those 9 pixels etc, etc. So it's pretty easy. So this 3 down here, for example, would be the average of those 9 pixels. Um, that would be if you're doing a box blur with um, you know, a height and width of 3 pixels. 
um, which is what we're going to do for the example. But in the end, you can make your box a bit bigger. So for this one, we could do uh, something like that. Yeah, you could have um, you know 25 pixels in your box blur, um, which is what the slider does in our um, plugin. Anyway, we'll get onto that. So this first pixel just here is going to be the average of these nine. I hit enter. There we go. It comes out as a three. Uh, I'm not sure if it actually comes out as a three. Let me just make sure that it's not um, chopping off the decimals. Oh, there you go. So it's actually a 2.6. Yeah, so the resulting image when this is box blurred with a box of 3x3 three three for that pixel is 2.56. It's probably 2.5 recurring, uh, realistically. Uh, anyway, if I just drag that out, we'll get the idea. Um, okay, so there's the other nine pixels of that first row just there. If I drag those down, what do we got there? Five, it's six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, alrighty, so that's the uh, end result for our box blur. That's what we're looking for just there. So every one of these pixels here is an average of nine pixels from this original image. Fair enough, that's what we're looking for. Um, but the trick is, and the the really uh, clever algorithm for, for doing this that you can read about this on uh, Wikipedia if you look up the box blur page on Wikipedia. Um, the trick is actually to pass through the image twice and uh, the first time pass through it and do what's called a horizontal motion blur and the second pass through uh, you do a vertical motion blur on the values that you um, calculated during your horizontal motion blur. <laughs> It's pretty confusing stuff, but it's going to make a lot of sense in a minute because if you look at this box blur down here, what we were doing uh, is for every pixel we were summing up 9. Uh, so for that first pixel we'd have to sum up 9 and then divide the you know, sum by 9 to get the average. Uh, for this next pixel we'd have to sum up 9 and divide by 9 to get the average. And what you can see is that that's quite a lot of work. For every single pixel we've got to sum 9 values and then divide by 9. Uh, it's a lot of work. So this is the trick. Down here I'll put the um, the result from the horizontal blur. I'll just call it H blur. And a horizontal blur is pretty easy. It works in a similar way to the box blur, only we only consider um, horizontal pixels. So those three just there is what we would consider. 0, 9 and 6. We'd add those up and then divide by 3 to get the uh, horizontal blur for that first pixel. So let's have a bit of a look at what that would be. Equals uh, average of those three. Okay, that comes out as five in our horizontal blur. So the next three for this six just here, you would calculate the average of those three. And then for the seven, you'd calculate the average of those three, etc., etc., until you get all the way through your entire image. Horizontal blur, pretty easy, really. Okay, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so that's the values from our horizontal blur. Uh, but what I want to say is that it's much, much easier to calculate the horizontal blur because um, unlike these boxes that we were calculating with the first result, with the horizontal blur, you can do that averaging trick that I talked about at the very start. <laughs> you see, so once we've calculated the average of these first three, the 0, the 9 and the 6, uh, when we come to calculate the 9, 6 and 7 average, what we can do is just subtract the 0 and add the 7 to the average that we previously calculated. And you can just keep doing that. So for the 7, what we can do is just subtract the 9 and add the 4. And you just work your way across the image. So the very first average that you calculate for each row has to be an outright sum. You've got to sum those up. Uh, but after that, you can just uh, subtract one value from the end and add another value to the right-hand end and you'll have your uh, moving average really, really fast. Um, it won't make a big difference with a 3x3 three three box blur like we're doing here, but I'm sure you can appreciate that if your box uh, is, say, 100 by 100 pixels, uh, all of a sudden that averaging trick becomes amazingly important. Um, yeah, well, let's just keep going and see what happens. So uh, after we've done our horizontal blur and we've gotten these, I think, I think there's 100, I think it's a 10x10 10 10 box. Yeah, we've got these 100 values. Um, we've got to assume that there's zeros on the outside of this box as well. Oh, they're big ones on the edge. Okay, let's just make them small like the rest of them. Um, okay, so we've got to assume that there's zeros on the outside of our horizontal blows output as well, but then using those values from that 
a second horizontal blur array there. We've got to recalculate a vertical blur. I'll just call it V blur. Uh, using the values from that H blur. So the vertical blur is exactly the same as the horizontal blur. Uh, it's another motion blur, only instead of uh, considering horizontal pixels, uh, it's vertical, so you consider vertical pixels. So the average of this first pixel here in our vertical blur will be the um, sum of 0, 0,5 and 2.67 divided by 3. Let's get that equal to the age of uh, those three. Okay, so it comes out as 2.56, and we do exactly the same thing for the next pixel beside it, and the next pixel beside it, and the pixel beside that, etc., 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 until we work our way across the entire image. Uh, I think actually when you're doing the vertical blur, we'll work downwards, so we do like 0, 5, and 2.6, and the next pixel that we calculate is um, 5, 2.6, and 2.33, and we do that so that we can use that averaging trick that we went through at the start. Anyway, let's just continue, we'll just drag our vertical blur downwards and see what happens. There you go. So that is the results just there of the vertical blur on the values of the horizontal blur. And what's interesting about this is that that is exactly the same as the box blur. That's the result up here that we were trying to calculate. Um, so that is the algorithm that we're going to use because it's much, much faster than my moving window algorithm that I was speaking about in the previous shoot. Um, yeah, I think that's about all I wanted to say on the actual workings of the algorithm. Uh, I think that we should get to coding now, but uh, we're going to code it in C++, and it's a little bit tricky, so I'm actually going to stop the recording and start it again, just in case I make a mistake, and I know, I know that I will. Anyway, see you on the other side.